Hess's law. Hess's law states that the enthalpy change in the chemical reaction is the same regardless of the route by which the chemical reaction takes place, provided the initial and final conditions or states are the same. So it means that if I have a reactant A that goes to C, and that is the enthalpy change, then the enthalpy change is the same as the, enthalpy, as the negative enthalpy change of H1 plus the enthalpy change of H2. So when you apply Hess's law, you can somewhat treat them like vectors. So in this case, if I need to flip this arrow, I have to put a negative sign to it. With that, let's take a look at how we can construct an energy cycle. Given this three enthalpy change, and we are supposed to use these values here to determine the enthalpy change of this equation. So this is the enthalpy change we are trying to find. The enthalpy that's given to us that involves the burning of carbon in oxygen. Second one involves in the burning of your hydrogen in the presence of oxygen. And last one is actually C2H2 reacting with oxygen to give carbon dioxide and water. So therefore, when we want to construct an energy cycle, we always look for something what I term as common point. So in this case, the common point for this will be the products of complete combustion. So I can write that first. And it's also important for you to list down the state symbol. In the case of this, we will know that the carbon will be burning with oxygen to give you actually carbon dioxide. And we know that we're going to start off with two. So here I'm going to put a two as well. So the value that we actually can put down here will be two times negative 393.5. In the case of this, in the case of hydrogen converting to your water, we will actually just have minus 285.8 kilojoules per mole. Okay. And finally, when you burn your C2H2 to produce this, then that will be minus 2598.8. And since the equation that was given was for two moles of C2H2 that converts to this, I have to make sure that now that there's only one mole that's converted to carbon dioxide and water, I have to make sure that it comes half. Okay. So the next part that we need to do is to add oxygen molecules on both sides to ensure that everything is balanced. So whatever number of atoms at this common point must be equal to the number of atoms at here. So how you can work that, how we can determine the oxygen that we have is that we will know that there's two carbon is balanced, hydrogen is balanced as well. So here got five, here got four oxygen atoms, here got one. So therefore I can put five over two. Once you add five over two here, you can also add five over two oxygen here because this and this need to be balanced. So that is the way that you form an energy cycle. The common mistake that students make is that they forget to multiply by the relevant factor, whether it's two or half in this case. The next common mistake is that they forget to add molecules at each of the point to make sure that all the number of atoms at each point must actually be the same. And finally, we could now use the Hess's law to actually calculate the delta H. So delta H in this case, so these two, uh, enthalpy change is going down, so the signage should be actually be kept. So it's 2 times minus 293.5 plus minus 285.8. And this one we need to flip the sign because it should be minus half times minus 2598.8. We're now going to run through review five templates that we use for energy cycles where the common points is elements products of complete combustion, gaseous atom, gaseous ion, and aqueous ion. In the first template that we have, the common point is elements. So normally the questions will provide enthalpy change of formation. So for example, in these questions here, you have your glucose molecule that is converted to carbon dioxide gas and your ethanol. And in this case, the data that's given is all the enthalpy change of carbon dioxide, ethanol, and sugar. So the common point becomes the elements. So all the arrows will indicate the enthalpy change of formation. And that's how you derive at this portion. From this energy cycle, you could also conclude that the enthalpy change is actually the sum of the enthalpy of the product subtract by the enthalpy of the reactant. In the second template, the common point is the products of complete combustion. So the information provided in the question will be enthalpy change of combustion. So that is similar to an example that we did earlier when we illustrate the energy cycle. So in these questions, we are looking at you determining the enthalpy change of this reaction. 
and you are provided the enthalpy change of combustion of your methane, which is this graphite, and as well as your hydrogen gas. When you construct an energy cycle, the common point is the products of complete combustion, and all the arrows is directed uh, towards it as they are enthalpy change of combustion. And you also note that the change in enthalpy is actually the sum of the enthalpy of the reactants subtract by the enthalpy of the product. So it's actually opposite to that of template one. Template three. In template three, the common point is gaseous atoms. And the data and the data they will provide you is either the enthalpy of atomization or otherwise they ask you to look up from the data booklet. So a good example to look at is to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction. So one of the pieces of the data that could be given is the enthalpy of atomization of carbon, which is given. So in this cycle, the common point is the gaseous atom. So do note that carbon solid to carbon gas is the enthalpy of atomization. So this one piece of data needs to be provided. The other two pieces of data could actually be left off from the data booklet. And from there, you can calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction. Let's take a look at another example. In the other example, we'll be looking at S8 solid going to 8S gas. And one needs to note that there's actually a new term called the enthalpy of vaporization. It is something that in the exam is slightly they will define that for you and you need to utilize it. You primarily have to utilize it because before you can apply your bond energy, which involves only gas phase reactant or products, you will find that you need to vaporize the compound. So in the case of S8, before I can use the bond energy of S to S, I have to vaporize it to gaseous state. So again, in this energy cycle, the common point is in fact your gaseous atom. Finally, we look at template four, which is actually your bond Haber cycle. You'll find in template four, we'll be looking at the common point being the gaseous ion, and the questions will provide the lattice energy or the enthalpy of formation and uh, the electron affinity. The data of ionization energy will have to be lifted off from the data booklet. So for example, in these questions, we could be asking you to find the, the lattice energy of calcium oxide. You will find that the enthalpy of atomization of calcium will be given. For the atomization of oxygen, we will not provide it, and you will have to leave off from the data booklet. The first IE and the second IE of calcium, you can leave off again from the data booklet. And the first EA and the second EA, they can provide the value for you. And the enthalpy of formation is also given as well. So with all these values given, uh, we will be able to actually compute the lattice energy of calcium oxide. In this second example for template four, what we have now is that we make EA the unknown. So it's important, first of all, when you sketch, when you sketch the bond Haber cycle, uh, when you sketch the energy level diagram for bond Haber cycle, you need to know that EA is less than zero, which is the reason why we indicate here that it actually drops. So the questions will provide the lattice energy, it will provide the enthalpy of formation, it will provide the atomization of magnesium, the bond energy of C to Cl, Cl to Cl, you can leave off from the data booklet. Similarly, for the first IE and the second IE. With this information provided, you are able then to use this energy level diagram to determine that the first EA is negative 346.5 kilojoules per mole. Finally, in our last template, the common point is aqueous ion. And typically, the questions will involve giving you enthalpy change of solution. And uh, it will also involve enthalpy change of hydration and as well as lattice energy. So let's take a look at an example. So in this example, what we have is the dissolution of your sodium chloride and your lithium chloride. So you will find that uh, common to both energy cycle, aqueous ions is actually the common point. And in this case, the other common point would actually be the gaseous ion. So both these will be the lattice energy, while these two are in fact the enthalpy change of hydration.